Ready, set, go. Oh, we're on. Are we it's on? It's Thursday. Champion. Give me some honey, honey for my honey. Woohoo! Woo! Get excited. Are we excited for whiskey? Whiskey. It's been a long time coming. Whiskey. We haven't done whiskey in a while. Yeah. We thought it's now winter and we're on. Yeah. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> we're going to do whiskey. Oh, there you go. We're going to do whiskey. That is true. Actually, we've been selling a lot of whiskey this week. It's really. It like like that all of yeah. a sudden we haven't sold much whiskey in the last couple of weeks and then all of a sudden we're on yeah beautiful it's July yeah. and wham bam thank you ma'am yeah people cool. all of a sudden just like it's time for a bit of whiskey no well we've got a special trick for you all tonight what's that what's that well you know you've been part of the central committee the central organising committee has decided that Ross does not do the tasting tonight oh you are because Ross the has tasting. been too silly all week to do a tasting so <laughs> Vivian's going to do the tasting for me. <laughs> So there you go, Vivian, come on. We're doing a swap out today. Um, we're changing the red wiggle for the yellow wiggle. There was too much, too much colour coordination going on, so hand sanitising away. Beautiful. And um, let's just imagine for a moment I know nothing about whiskey. So it'll be a, a, an exciting learning process. Hi, everybody. Woo! What are we starting with, Luke? Um, so we're starting with uh, the Glenfiddich 12 year old. So. Well, um, do we want to talk a bit about like why we've chosen these ones in particular? Like yeah, the Highland. Let's do that while I pour, shall we? What are main characteristics of Highland whiskey? Would you say? So, the Highland region is the largest whiskey region in Scotland, mm -hmm. um, and is was chosen as such because it's got a very stable climate, as opposed to certain other parts of Scotland, and you get lots of um, honey, subtle spices. Um, little bits of fruit, particularly lots of vanilla, um, particularly a little bit of grassiness, but mostly you're looking at um, honey, orange peel, a little bit of spice. And is that true for all Highland whiskies? Not all Highland whiskies, um, but that's the general tasting notes you'll get from that region. Right. So some are a further departure than others in terms of... Okay, and what is it about the Highlands that gives you that? sort of flavour? Um, in terms of Highlands that gives you that flavour, there's, it's particularly, there's a couple of different things, um, but obviously whiskey is mostly about the grain. Yep. So um, it's a higher altitude, um, you get a very stable grain growth, you get right. um, alpine water, so you get water off the mountains. So all the grain stuff. comes from the Highlands as well, it's not, it's not grain that comes from elsewhere, it's grain growing, grown in the Highlands, is that the story? This is where we'll get to. Um, <laughs> the reason tough questions already. There's a bit of con conversation and That's a it. bit of you like a bit of tough questions. Right? Con convoluted situation in terms of these whiskies. Um, a lot of the actual distilleries themselves aren't in the Highland. Right. Most of the distilleries are in further down in terms of altitude, slightly more heavily populated areas, right. cities, towns, stuff like that. Somewhere better to live. Yeah. Um, and easier to <laughs> distribute <fine>. from. <laughs> So you'll right. often find yeah. there's conversations about lots of Highland stuff when you actually look up the distilleries, where they're from is a bit all over the place, right. but they'll still classify themselves as a Highland whiskey because their parcel of land that they grow the grain on is in the Great. Highland Great. region. Got it. Okay. Beautiful. Another reason we're doing whiskey is because about now we were actually going to be in Scotland, but of course we're not in Scotland. <laughs> as of yesterday, we're, we should have been we're, we're here in the here. Highlands. So. Bugger, the, bugger COVID for a joke. We're going to go to the Highlands with a bottle. That's what I say. Yeah. Um, well, because it's our first whiskey tasting. How do we talk about how we how whiskey's made? Yeah, let's go over to Eva. Well, I see. I'm not a really a whiskey drinker, so this is like me learning about it. So if my facts are wrong, I no, apologize. that's why it's so exciting. Um, well, so originally they have. Well, we've been there and done that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I must hold. I must be the person who's bought the most whiskey and knows the least about it. I bought. Bar I have personally bought barrels and barrels, barrels. of whiskey, without right. actually knowing anything about it. <laughs> You're like, because I was the only person sober enough to purchase the whiskey <laughs> at the time. Because Ross was getting. Was, um, because Ross had done lots of tasting. Ross was helping the <laughs> distiller. Uh, Ross, yeah. sampling. Sampling. Yeah. Ross, yeah. barrel sampling. Just don't stand too close to the mic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm too loud. No, no, you're good. Yeah. So um, Vivian was watching us barrel sample, looking at which barrels she's going to buy by the yeah. stupid expression on her face. <laughs> That's right. Anyway. <laughs> um, well, yeah, so they get the malt. Well, this is particularly Glenfiddich that I was researching. Um, so they get the malt and make it into so like a kind of a porridgey sort of substance, and they hit it at 64 degrees, and then this sort of starts... And they make it ferment. 
Yes, it starts a fermentation. <laughs> but that's because when they add the yeast, then that produces enough heat, and then it gets to probably like a 20%-ish. Right. Yeah. It, and then it looks exactly like porridge. Yeah. Yeah. Porridge. I haven't seen it. It does look like porridge. Yeah. <laughs> um, and for anyone at home, this is a very convoluted thing, and I'm sure Eva will touch on this at some point. Um, things like beer um, is fermented, much like wine. That gives you alcohol from fermentation. Um, when spirits are made, we refer to it, um, the way that process works is you add yeast and it creates um, a fermentation. Sometimes that's added yeast, sometimes it's natural yeast that actually comes from the general product. That gives you a low ABV product, which is then distilled to a higher percentage. So you've got fermentation and then distillation. Yeah, so they're your two things. major okay. things when it comes to the actual produce production production of the yeah. alcohol content, right. which is quite important to whiskey. Mm. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay. so then it goes through the distill, and then it, I think this the Glenfiddich gets distilled twice, and then it, because it originally like 20%, and then it gets up to about 70%. And then what they Ooh. do is mix the water. I can't remember what the river is called, but they like to use the same water on absolutely everything and mix it with everything. Um, and then it bring it down to like a 63.5 and then pop it in the barrels. And then there you mm. go. Right. Champion. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and the reason the 70% is so important in terms of distillation, things like vodka, you want high purity, low flavor. They distill it up to 95 to 96%. Right. Um, and that's kind of a sliding scale. So the higher ABV, you get um, less flavour profile but more clarity. Mm -hmm. And so okay. that's sort of a sliding okay, scale. Okay, let's go on to the flavour profile. Yeah. 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 Okay, anyway. so how do we, we... We've done lots of tasting of whiskey and in recent... Uh, whiskey, of wine, and in recent weeks we've done some tasting of vodka and a whole lot of other bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. How do we go about tasting whiskey? Is it any different? Do we just look at it, smell it, and then taste it? Drink some more. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the the only the only real difference is at some point you need to coat your palate with some whiskey because the first uh, bit you get where it hits your palate will be alcohol, yeah, right. and not flavour. So you have to drink it before you taste it. Well, you got That's to a very it. Scottish thing to do. Um, right? It's a it's a double. It's they refer to it as like a, a double tasting. So, so you, you smell it, it like palate, like taste well. it. Once it's on your palate, then you smell it and taste it again. Okay. So, but you got to wash your palate with it. So right, just wash, so your, wash yourself cleanse. in whiskey, basically. Yeah. All right, straight off the nose. Or straight on the nose. Straight on the nose. Bit of spice. There's a little mm. bit of spice. That sort of grassy honey. honey no, I can see the honey. Yeah, I can get and the honey. And vanilla. What, yeah. what about yeah. some caramel or butterscotch? Yeah. The cream. Not There's cream. definitely a, almost mm. a burnt sugar sort of toffee. Uh, I'm nearly toffee. I was about to say nearly mm. toffee. It's a bit more toffee than caramel for me. Well, this one's put in American oak barrels and European cherry cup casks and then they mix them together so, it's so this is where you got the vanilla from out yeah. of the american oak yeah mm. okay okay the problem with having a look behind the camera is there's nobody uh, and a ross behind the camera is there's nobody to disagree with you or to disagree with you about something <laughs> 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 ah now i'm seeing the cunning plan i'm sure we'll disagree about something oh, yeah nice. I, that's we can find something i can see what you mean there, there's a bit of that buttery sort of mm. thing that is a bit butterscotchy but the actual smell is much more Toffee. Almost oily. It's a beautiful, beautiful colour. It is oily. Yeah, let's talk about colour. Um, beautiful gold. It's not like a straight yeah. yellow. It's definitely a. It's like a brown. A gold amber. Yeah, mm. yeah. That's actually a really nice coloured whiskey. It is. It's beautiful. Now the Glenfig is actually the youngest of these whiskies. Is that the reason we're tasting them in this order? No, 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 no. This is a twelve-year-old. No, no, no. It's the youngest the distillery. distillery. Is the youngest distillery? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, it was a bit of combination. We're going youngest to oldest in terms of the distilleries. We're also going lightest to most complex. Okay. So not lightest to heaviest. I don't think that's necessarily the best term for whiskies because they have yeah. lots of different flavour profiles. Yeah. But okay. But complexity. Well, they've, they've, they've got a slight tinge of peat to them, but the Highland Park is the most heavily peated of the three. Yeah. Okay. Ah, so we'll have the peat conversation yeah. later on. Who's peat? Uh-uh. <laughs> All right, let's get into palette. I can taste that butteriness on my on my tongue. Well, mm. you can have buttery alcohol or alcohol tongue butter. Yeah. Yeah. That's that slight oiliness we were talking about before, isn't it? Yeah. It's a really interesting texture. That it doesn't fully coat your mouth though. Like sometimes, if you expect sort of a buttery sort of yeah taste. Well, it's got an oily finish though. So. Yeah, but I wasn't. It, but didn't, it didn't make me go. Woof. <laughs> 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 
So it's forty percent. These are all these are all forties, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. What's yeah. everyone getting at home on this one? Mm. Mm. It's nice Anything else on the palette apart from vanilla and? There's like um, there's something I'm trying to work out. It's almost like prune. Yeah. Like sultanas. I get that. I've got an appley sort of. Yeah. yeah buttery of apple sort of flavour. Yeah. Granny Smith, like like cooked Granny Smiths. Like pears. Yeah. 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 Like pears, one of those. I've been cooking quinces a lot lately, which is something you do in sort of autumn, winter. Mm. Not quite quince. So. No, it's not quite quince. Mm. It's got a richness to it, a bit more rich than apple. Um, Jenna said, watered down, but then like a mega peated. Ah, American oat. That explains my m reaction. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not for everyone, is it? <laughs> yeah. No. But it's a very consistent performer, isn't it, Glenn Fitty? Very consistent. It's very drinkable. Well, yeah, well, I was reading about the Glen Fig, and with their production, because it is so mass produced, like they may sell it in 180 countries or something yep. ridiculous. They are so particular on it that no matter what batch is, they're almost identical with yeah. the flavour profile. Well, you'd have to do that, wouldn't you? Yeah. I guess. Mm. So this is not like, oh, are we tasting where it was one mm. percentage here and a completely different percentage in Chile? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was quite yeah. funny. Um, mm, okay. Kaylin's saying I'm getting sticky date pudding. Yeah. Oh, that's, it's like no, that's Christmasy. That, that's that, that's that, that's that flavour you're... That's that fruit It's that flavor. dark fruit. Mm. And that'd be, yeah, coming from the sherry. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And that'll be interesting too because the McCallum's also a sherry cask, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And we'll get to that. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see what happens with the sweetness there. Now I might add a little drop of water. To yeah, I could go with some water actually. Now we're being now, super fancy we, dancy. Why, why I found this because I was like, I'm going to use this. This will be fantastic. <laughs> How many drops? Perfect. When we did whiskey tasting with <gasps> some that was a bit much, sorry. whiskey yeah. gurus, they were talking about the the reason you put a bit of water, not like you don't dilute it, you, you put a bit of water in it to three really, drops. two or three drops to really release all of the um, phenolic. Phen phenolic smells, the phenols in it. Mm. And it now smells quite different. Yeah, it does. I'm getting a lot more sort of grassy floralness. But it's that. also, it's, it smells more rounded. It smells more sort of like it doesn't have... It's not as harsh. No. Mm. No, but it's, it's only, it's only a tiny it bit It means of water. you're smelling the whiskey more than the alcohol vapour. Yeah, maybe mm. that's what it is. Kind of yeah. what the water does. I can see why it kills the purists vapor. would not want you to put ice in it. Because I think that kill would... kill the flavour. Yeah. Well, maybe. You change the flavours. I wouldn't say kill it. Mm. Now, the, a couple of drops of water, to me, it brings out the, the caramel flavour in there. Like mm. the honey mm. flavours. Mm. I like it better with a couple of drops of water in it, actually. Mm. I actually, there's it's a something... It smooths it out. Which is referred to as heather, which is like a grassy honey sort of flavour. Yeah. Which I really enjoy out of that with a bit of water. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of like that grass vodka a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that sort of earthiness. No, I like that. Mm. Oh, the bison grass one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, Christine says, I don't mind a few drops of orange bitters. Ah, mm. And eating it with 90% dark chocolate. That sounds pretty good. Mm. Mm. Because of the... the the lightness of the smokiness. If you want a good, a good drink, Glenfiddich does make a seriously good cocktail mixer. Okay. I think it's a pretty solid all rounder. Would that be a so? Would that be what you would choose? Uh, it depends what you feel like. It makes a really good old fashioned or a really good sour. Okay. But yeah. most people wouldn't use a scotch for those things. Now these are all Particularly single. These sour. are all single malts. Do we want to talk a bit about what single malt means? Made with a single malt. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, Genius. <laughs> over, the, over the loop. <laughs> well, yeah. So, number one, whiskies can be made with any variety of grains, all sorts of bits and bobs. Um, so, what a single malt necessarily means is that there's only really one source for the flavour. Right. Um, now, there's a bit of confusion with single malt. People think that when something says blended and single malt, that that's about people pouring bits and bobs into one product. Right. Um, you can make a single malt um, that comes from the same stock of grain. Yep. Which has different years blended together. Oh, I see. Righto. So Maybe. I can take some some from 2005, so be, some from 2007. Us, so those of us ah. who drink wine, that would be a bit like single block. Something 2010. Yeah. Yep. You can actually put them all in the same bottle and call it a single malt because it's about the fact that this comes, all of the flavour comes in the same type of grain, yeah. right. in the same place, 
there's, there's okay. no corn or rye. So or it's a single point of origin kind it's, of arrangement, it's really. Usually, when it says that, it's all straight barley. Yeah. And there's no corn, there's no rye, there's no Anything. other grains. This is getting, this is really developing now with oh. that bit of water, I think. I'd sort of thought, I'd seen, I'd sort of thought that whiskies at, at this level were a bit more one dimensional than mm. that. Mm. But no, there's more. But no, there's more. Indeed. <laughs> but um, wait, there's more. Where, have you tried this one with the water in it? Sipped it? Yeah. Okay, well, I haven't yet. Oh. <laughs> no, I, li I like it better yeah. with the water in it. It doesn't taste, I was worried that the water with the water in it would taste diluted, and it doesn't taste, because you've only put a couple of drops in. Mm. But it really sort of smooths it out, I think. Mm. And it's not, as you say, it stops you inhaling the. That's quite right. Mm. Now, where would you like to be drinking? The oh, this is, this is, well, I think all whiskies should be drunk inside by a fire. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> um, and given that we're not currently allowed to drink them in Scotland, I guess we'll have to drink them mm. here by the fire. <laughs> Rats. <laughs> what else? Nuts? Chocolate? Dried fruit? Oh, yeah. pairing. Mm. Mm, I think Christine's idea of chocolate is a good one. Although I think if I drank whiskey and ate chocolate, I would be up all night doing that. <laughs> Yes. It's hard to tell um, yourself to go to bed when you've got a actually, bottle of whiskey nuts, and some good chocolate. Nuts would be good, I think. I chocolate can, can be hard if you get too much bitterness from the cocoa or too much sweetness from the sugar content. You've yeah. got to find the right middle ground there. Yeah, yeah okay. But nuts, I think, is good. Any suggestions from the crowd at home? Mm. I'm not sure. Beautiful. She must have an idea. Have we got any experience? Well, Christine's already said she's eating dark chocolate. Um, Experienced whiskey drinkers, what are we eating with this? Mm. And I'm assuming, do we we have whiskey after dinner? We don't have whiskey before dinner? Um, yeah, generally uh, considered to be after dinner. I don't dinner. know that I would have whiskey and then wine. Mm. I think. Jen's got chocolate covered blackberries. Oh, she's very fancy. Yeah. <laughs> um, or she wants to be eating it. All right. Okay. Yeah. Now, we're moving on to the McAllen, are we? We are. Yeah. Oh. Now you have a good question for the audience for this one. Oh yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna do this. A little quiz. It's a quiz. Not a quiz, a bit of, not a quiz a but course. you know, a bit of fun. Um, so we were doing some research about McAllen. McAllen is very highly renowned um, in terms of whiskies. Um, they are the third, second or third most popular highest sold whiskey um, after. Glenfiddich and the other ones kind of chop and change. So they're always right. in the top two or three. Okay. Um, they were voted to be the official um, the official whiskey of the Speaker of the House of Commons 2007 or 2004? I might yeah, be wrong. Yeah. 2007, I think. Um, it's also quite popular now, particularly because it was featured in um, James Bond. Oh. So <laughs> when James Bond is not drinking... A martini. He is drinking McAllen. McAllen, McAllen whiskey. There you go. So there's some serious branding that's gone. Well, I have McAllen. to say, given the, but the given the yes, the real thing is they have won the Guinness World Record for the most expensive bottle of whiskey ever sold. Mm. So, so everyone are. guess. Well, Luke's the only one that knows the answer, so we have to guess. How much money? Yeah. yeah. Uh, pounds or dollars? Um, I've converted it to Australia. American oh, USD because okay. general market. Kind of okay. USD. Okay. Wasn't it found in America though, that bottle? That was found in and sold in America uh -huh. um, by Christie's Auction House in New York. Um, the second highest selling whiskey was also Macallan in Hong Kong mm -hmm. by Sotheby's. I want to say Sotheby's, but I might be wrong. Yeah, okay. Um, so the question is how much? How much? And you ballpark you... figure. Yeah, okay. Will what you do tell you us think? at the end? Oh, I. I'm going to say... A this size bottle? Um, I will give you a clue. Yeah? The second high... One of the second highest... The no, first, don't tell me. The first time that they took a Guinness World Record for the highest selling whiskey... Yeah? ...was over $500,000. Um, That's a clue. I'm going... And it beat that. I'm going... eight fifty. Ooh. I... 850000 Yes. I'm going to go... 642. <laughs> 680. 680. All right, well, I'll tell you at the end. At the end? Okay. All right. Well, Caitlin spoiler alert. Um, what I was also going to say is um, is that this is a completely different... Smell. Smell. Um, mm. It's heavy, heavy, heavier in the sherry cask kind of smell. Darker colour. It is a darker colour, um, as Ross pointed out. And how McCallum got their um, sort of prestige 
is, and they're coming up on their, in a couple of years, they're coming up on their 200th anniversary of the foundation of the distillery, they the are. founding of the distillery. Seems um, but where they really started their company was they really mastered um, whiskey being barrel aged in sherry casks. Okay. Um, and they always have and always, always have and still to this day hand pick every barrel. Um, and to the point at which they actually make investments in sherry in Spain so okay. that they're producing enough barrels for okay. the whiskey that they sell. Because yeah. sherry sales aren't as high as they used to be, so they actually need to... So, so we're now making sherry to put it in casks so that we can empty it out, <laughs> tip it on the ground, <laughs> feed it to the pigs. And we are, we are now it. at a point at which we sell so much whiskey that whiskey producers are paying people to make sherry first. Right. And what I was going to say is given the amount of... Um, stick that the English have, have had recently over numerous things, Bojo, COVID, you name it. Um, I'm impressed. <laughs> Brexit. Brexit. is Bojo. Such a Bojo scomo, the whole collection. Oh, I love that. Um, I am quite impressed that the Bojo Speaker... Bojo the I, I'm quite impressed that there is an official whiskey for the Speaker of the House of Commons. I think that's quite flat. I want to know what... There the, is one every year. But I want to know what the official one is for the, for the uh, Leader of the House of Lords. Do you want to hear the funniest thing about this? We story? don't have an official anything. They asked. I guys probably don't even drink. They <laughs> asked the Speaker of the House to dedicate his whiskey in the year. I think it's two thousand and seven. I might be wrong. Um, and they didn't realise that he had officially given up drinking. Oh. So um, this, among all of the whiskies, was picked out just on the nose. Oh, okay. So he picked it out by smelling the whiskey. Oh, I bet. Well, if he if he'd officially given up drinking. I have a slight suspicion. It's possibly because he'd done quite a bit of drinking before. Four. So he knew what so it So maybe he knew what it tasted like. Um, but also in the mid-2000s, they started using... It's quite different. It's quite sort of big round They softies, added bourbon casks to their the mix of caskings. Ah, so yeah. high proportion of sherry cask. There yeah. is still a portion of bourbon cask in there as well. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So what was that? Is, is that the normal... No. That, that's, that's not the sherry cask one. This is the sherry and cask This one. is their straight sherry cask, but their other series. Sorry. But there's no bourbon in that one. No. 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 But that's the, is that the difference in smell. So now we don't have American oak. Okay. We have, Just we have sherry. sherry. Yeah. So I think Which that's got rid so. of that vanilla smell. Yeah. And definitely. there's more fruit. It's not as sweet. Is everyone getting a bit no, more dried fruit? Yeah. Mm. A lot yeah. more dried fruit. And uh, oh, honey. More salt. Oh, a different kind of honey, mm. yeah. I think. Is it sort of more, more, more deeper like a marker honey? Yeah, maybe. Christina said, rich and slightly smoky on the nose. It is smokier, isn't it? She it's said, really does easy. this have a little hint of peat? Yeah, probably. Yeah, there is a hint probably. of peat in that. Yeah. Um, it's a much more complex <laughs> thing. Very complex. Liz says, don't mention walnuts with this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. I'm Fantastic. finding that I think without as much vanilla from the American oak, I'm getting mm. a lot more complexity. Mm. That's got a really beautiful, when you taste, that really does coat your tongue and taste beautiful. It's definitely getting a lot more, like, mm. dark caramel. And bass tones to it. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, dried fruit, like, dried fruit. dates and plums. And mm. Mm. Um, I was I reading... this is Sticky Day Pudding. The Jim Murray Whiskey Bible, and he was saying that they were getting, and this is a very specific reference at home, which made me feel a lot better about my very odd... References, but he said boiled green ga green gauges. Just have a green. Giving plum. you a run for your money for your weird things. <laughs> I know. I felt very good about myself for not being the most ridiculous <laughs> taster in the world. But yeah, there's plum. But it's a long finish as well. Really yeah, long. Really long. Very. Good. I don't get any green gauge plums out of that. Mm. He's making them up. Definitely the dried fruit though. Yeah, I get mm. that. Yeah. I'm get getting that. a bit of plumminess. I wouldn't say green gauges, but definitely no. a bit of plum. And some spices on the finish as well. You know, I've got a bit of... It's a very different mouthfeel. I feel nearly, like this nearly, not cinnamon, but maybe cassia bark, sort of. Yeah. Yeah, there's like a woody... Yeah, that smell. Almost allspice. Like allspice berries, or... Yeah, maybe. What is that? It's almost a subtle touch of, like, star anise to it. Oh, yeah. I get that at the yeah. end. Right yes, at the end. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. I get it. With that oily finish and yeah. that mm. slight spicy brightness. That makes sense, yes. And nearly sort of, you know that, you know, you say allspice berries, juniper, that sort of... Well, Christina mm. says nutmeg. That's that's the kind of thing. Yeah, that's, that's there's that's a the woodiness kind of, to it. Yeah. yeah. 
It's which is obviously probably from the oak aging. Mm. Mm. Oh, there's something that reminds yeah it reminds Christine of a custard tart with like the nutmeg on top. That makes sense. Oh yeah, yeah. okay. Mm. With the spiciness. But this is this is definitely. I like this better. Good. I th- well, I'm better. You know, I think it's this is more to my taste. That's what I mean. Yeah. I quite like a sherry cask finish. Wow, <laughs> what did that do to the nose? Not to the nose. Broadened it out. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Mm. All right. So we're getting a lot. So a bit more. We just had a, a couple of bits of water. It's that, crazy water. how much it changes it. it I'm gonna yeah. crazy, isn't it? before we go anywhere. I'm gonna actually cleanse my palate a little bit as well. I think that's not a bad idea. I might do that too. Should be just tipping over this thing. Here. You don't need three drops. <laughs> We're having glass of water, <laughs> glass of whiskey. Can I mm-hmm. do some? Do you want a glass? A glass. Thank you. Um, yeah. So we are obviously tasting our whiskey straight, so we are making sure we drink our, some water. Very good idea. And I have, I'm, I'm with you. I think the first time I did a tasting and they put just a couple of drops of water in, I thought this is the wankiest thing I've ever been in my life. And well, yeah, the first time These I guys can't possibly think that will make a difference. <laughs> the first time and I it does. tried whiskey was a lark. And I was like, what, why are you putting water in whiskey? And I was like, oh, that's a thing. Right. The other thing is <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, um, the, the actual whiskey itself has been either in a barrel or in a bottle. Yeah. So it's, it's been pretty, not, not, not a lot of oxygen. Yeah. Much like a wine, it needs a bit of air and water when can we, help as when well. When we did the big whiskey t- tasting at Light, we did we did a, a small one in the morning uh, in the, for those of you who haven't been there, it's right on the harbour. The Lark Distillery, to, yeah. To, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah the, the, the tasting room, right on the harbour in, Ho- in Silador in Hobart. Absolutely gorgeous. Thanks to Mawson's Hut, which is really worth a visit. Um, not, obviously not Mawson's Hut, the replica of Mawson's <laughs> Hut. And then... Um, we did a few other things. We went to a couple, another distillery and discovered we could buy stuff in a cask there. And then we were celebrating the fact that we managed to buy ourselves a cask of whiskey. And so we hadn't been able to get any of the um, Sullivan Cove <laughs> French cask. And they wouldn't sell us any bottles. We couldn't even taste any bottles. Um, but we managed to buy a barrel. Anyway, so <laughs> we went off to celebrate the fact that we bought a barrel, had a couple of glasses of wine over lunch, and then went literally down the hill from Frogmore uh, yeah, uh, winery yeah, to, uh, in, down, the to, down to the Lark Distillery, which sounds very posh, but it's just a big thumping shed. And <laughs> and we got to see what's interesting down at Lark is that they actually they actually have their own peat bog. That's a whole other peat story, anyway. But they show that's where we saw all the 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 mash and the malt and all of the gear. And uh, and then we went to the shed with all of these barrels in it where they'd been mixing all of this stuff, and that's where the, there was no water to add to the tasting. There, it was just. Flat chat. Yeah, whiskey was a whiskey. And uh, at <laughs> five o'clock had come and gone, and so the distiller decided he had finished for the day. So he's saying to us, "Oh, let's taste this, let's taste that," and they're hopping around on top of these barrels, and I'm going, "Oh, ock health and safety, seriously, this is bad <laughs> tasting this stuff." And um, at about the point where Ross lost all his consonants, um, <laughs> <laughs> I asked if I could buy a barrel of whiskey, and he said, "Sure." That nice. one. Over. The specific words about. What about oh, that? that? Is that sold? <laughs> that one. So, um, and someone said no. That's how we managed to get all of that whiskey. But, anyway. uh, but I, I could only buy it because I hadn't been <laughs> drinking it. Oh, whiskey adventures. Yeah, it mm. was a big whiskey right. adventure. Back to Scotland. Sorry. That's all right. Mm. All right. What are we getting on the nose here? I'm getting a lot more honey now. Yeah, I'm getting more honey now that it's got a bit of water in it. That and is a I'm really interesting exercise at home. Is that again? Exercise? I'm in the to- toffee thing, have you? Yeah, it's it's now tasting. I'm getting very more toffee. more burnt burnt sugar kind of. See, before I put water in it, I thought it was almost minerally, and then put yeah. it like I don't know. There was something about it. But yeah. Now not so much anymore. The fruits come out. Yeah, definitely. The sherry. Yeah, you can smell of... the sherry. You can smell mm. the mm. sherry fruits, and you can. Yeah. Oh wow, that is beautiful on the palate with a couple of gla- drops of water. That is, that really is a seriously nice. different thing, and it's it's it's. Definitely bringing out the sherry sort of notes, like that sort of yeah, really beautiful. But also, you can really see how if you tasted that cold, like if it had ice in it, it yeah. would just be flat as a tack. Mm. No, that's it? a very good point. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really interesting. What does everyone else think? That's what I want to know. Mm. Yum. And at Everyone's some point, delicious. I will have to find my notes that have the actual price of the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert! Like how, oh, they're right in front of me. Yeah, people have sent in some good answers. 
Okay. All right, right. What are we oh, looking no, at? No, no, not yet. No, we'll, we'll do, do it at the end. end. Yeah, All right. We'll do it at the end. Okay. Are we doing it at the end of the McAllen or the end of the oh. taste? <laughs> oh, we can do it at the end of the McAllen. Well, we can do All it at the end of the Let's get into Lisa it. Reed's do you want to say? No, no, no. What, okay. Read them out. Let's talk about it. All right. So you said so, what? Six, six points. I said, I said eight fifty. Eight fifty. You said six hundred and forty-two. Six eighty. So we've got Christine saying seven hundred and seventy-seven. We've got Caitlin saying 1.2 million. Oi. Liz says 900. Mm -hmm. They're outbidding each other. Liz is saying, I top you. <laughs> Watch the numbers go up. Um, to that. Luke says 860. Mark Millington says 1.5. Hello, Mark million. up in New South Wales. Welcome. 1.5 million. That's yeah. because he's in real estate. He's just bidding it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got the highest one so far. Yeah, so. that'd be right. Oh, well, Mark that'd be right. Mark. Well, all right. So... I wasn't expecting it to get that high in the bidding terms, <laughs> but, you know, competitive customers, yeah. why not? Um, yeah, so they sold a bottle in... This is, this is where we get the really good bit. So they sold... The first time they took the the most expensive was Christie's auction, mm -hmm. uh, 54000 That and everyone was pretty wowed by that. It then went up for a single bottle in a crystal decanter of a 24-year-old, Went to 460,000. Oh, I think I'm only done now. Uh, and in 2018, they sold a bottle of a 60 year old whiskey. Ooh. One of the oldest expressions that was Four. available in in Edinburgh. Is this the most expensive? For a million. Ooh. Whoa. Well, in that and case, 58,000. No, I think, I think Liz. Liz is closest. 58,954. Yeah. And 25 cents. Ooh. Well, Liz, you've won. And what I want to know. Nothing but our sheer impression. What, our sheer what do you get for the 25 cents? <laughs> <laughs> that's a postage stamp. Oh, these are half a postage uh, No, yeah. that's probably a conversion. Um, yeah, it probably is my conversion. So. Yeah, okay, moving on. But before I finish. Sorry. Oh, okay. um, the McAllen Distillery also was purchasing and acquiring bottles for their own personal private collection. Oh. Men or not their personal co uh, private up, collection. Men after my own And heart. was then auctioning off these bottles. Right. Um, the million dollar bottle, actually all of the proceeds went to charity oh. for providing clean water, um, which is nice. beautiful. Love that. Um, but they actually, because they re repurchased some bottles, some vintage bottles from places, yeah. they decided to no longer sell those private acquisitions because there was risk of counterfeits. So, um, oh, I see. the reason yeah. you look at whiskies nowadays and there's such heavy the labelling of age statements and brand prestige, um, because McCallan actually went in and found that some of the whiskies that were being sold at high market price were only 10 years old and were actual <gasps> forgeries. So, maybe stick to the affordable stuff and you Plot, might get something no. that's real. Plot twist. <laughs> yeah, yeah wow. Emery said the oil in this one is almost overwhelming. Mm. Sort of like not full to flavour sometimes. Think? Like, I think it carries the flavour. I like. I like. Anyway, moving right along. Wham, bam, thank you, man. Uh, well, the other one ready. Well, as usual, everyone felt different. Josh also said only Americans put ice in whiskey? Question mark? No, I've seen some Queenslanders do it. <laughs> <laughs> Queenslanders put ice in everything. Careful, I think your sister's watched. <laughs> <laughs> you um, yeah. Possibly my sister as well. <laughs> that being said, scotch is generally assumed to be a cold weather drink and you know if it's 50 degrees maybe you want a block of yeah, ice yeah. in it well maybe i would put it in Quite a cold right. <laughs> maybe i would put it in a cold glass yeah okay that, that, might, yeah, that might help yeah. okay maybe have a cold beer instead. highland park 10 next yep all right yeah, Ooh, that, that's still a wonderful yeah. coffee butterscotchy kind of finish the that's long finish long. i think the um bit of creamy i think the all. difference in complexity between this and this is quite marked yeah. Yeah. Um, is that on the Millington scale? Is that the scale? Uh, okay. So, so it's spilling it all over yeah, the counter. Yeah, it's not the best bottle for pouring. Um, <laughs> sorry. No, it isn't. Is um. It? So with Highland Park, what do we know about these guys? So this Hi is the oldest of the three distilleries. Ah. Yeah. Plot twist. But the youngest. The youngest actual whiskey, whiskey we're trying. Yep. Yeah. Correct. That is right. Seventeen Quite something. Um. Seven. Yeah. So the oldest distillery. Ooh. Peak, um, peak they're peak. from the Orkney, Orkney Isles, which is Where the, orcs come from. Sorry. the northernmost <laughs> isle of Scotland. <laughs> you see the jokes come up through the floor. Um, <laughs> so it's the second northest, northmost, northmost set of isles um, in the UK. 
just before Shetland. Right. So Shetland is, you know, obviously... Where the ponies hang out. Well, just way too far is really the answer to that question. <laughs> um, but Orkney is it's technical. between Shetland and um, the mainland um, and have a very specific um, tradition of um, sort of Viking blood. Mm, so, apparently. why do we? Why do they call themselves Highland Park if they're on an island? Um, well, and this is a conversation that's to be had about all of these. Mm-hmm. Macallan, Glenfiddich, not necessarily in what is considered to be the Highland region. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of these whiskies actually predate that system. The description of Highlands. <gasps> yeah, okay. So that's why when we looked around, some of these distilleries fall in Speyside. Um, yeah. Because Speyside is the newest classification of region. It was actually originally part of the Highland. Right. Um, okay. They decided to separate it because it was more coastal, had some slightly different flavours. Right. So whether or not they call themselves Speyside or Highlands is up to them based on what okay. they want to talk about in terms of the flavour of their whiskey. Ah, well, that's not nice to pour out of. I do like right. the bottle. Yeah. It is a very fun bottle, isn't it? Um, but this is a very old school Highland style. Um, a little bit more this is more complex. Peat. This has got more peat. A little bit more smoke. A little bit more... Yeah, I like, I like the amount of peat, though. It doesn't overwhelm the whiskey. Yeah. yeah. Janice says the Highland Park goes well with shortbread. Oh, well, that's a thing. Yeah. yeah, that would make sense. Whoa, this one's so different. Very different. Yeah. So this is what happens when... We're talking about isles here. So you move further away from the mainland and more into the sort of coastal island regions. You send, tend to see a bit more smoke, a little bit more mm. saltiness, a little bit more savoury notes, less of that honey and vanilla. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And this goes to show that high, mm. what is classified There's as a... There's a sort of grassiness or something about it. A highland whiskey mm. can be quite different. Mm. Yeah. There's a yeah. lot more I to I like that. Christine's getting a little smoke with this one. Yeah. But also honey. Yeah. Yeah, I think it has. I think they've all got a bit of that honey flavour, but this has definitely got a lot more smoke mm. and peak to it. And almost, yeah, like earthy. Yeah, yeah. The grassy. There's an saying. element mm. of. Yeah, there's a grassiness, yeah. Mm. Phenolic. Like dried grass. In there, which is like a iodine sort of a smell. Yeah, yeah Caitlin mentioned a bit of iodine. But um, yeah, definitely. It's particularly seen in um, peak. Uh, things that have Ooh, been yum. peat smoked. Mm. Uh, it's got a really nice. There's a muskiness on the nose, mm. which I yeah, quite but enjoy. Yeah, it's, but it's got a really beautiful mouthfeel and mm. taste. That's delicious. Caitlin says it's like, a little bit like Vegemite. Oh, the smell? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Not the taste. Good All right. too. Palette's very complex. It's a bigger. It's, it's a bigger palette again. We've gone up in palette weight. Um, Definitely. Yeah. What's really interesting about this, despite having some peat smoke and some herbal and some iodiny sort of flavours, the front palate, right as it hits the tongue, is a little bit sweet and a little bit. Yep. There's yep. a little bit of that light, sweet grassiness, which is really refreshing. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah, Luke has mm. said it's getting a lot of smoke and grass. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else want It's to getting see? more intense as it's getting oxidised. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and there's um, conversations about. Soon. Um, certain coastal regions and islay and things like that also taking some flavour from how much salt and salinity is in the soil and how much pH changes as well. (gasps) This tastes like toasted marshmallows. Who says that? You. Me. Heard it. it (laughs) Heard it you first. Claim to fame. I think it's the, the smokiness and then sort of a little bit of sweetness. Oh, the water is really opening up. Yeah, I, I But that. I did that before. I haven't put any water but in that's yet. But that's a textural thing too because it gives you that middle palate. Mm, okay. I'm getting a lot more smoke out of this once the water comes in. Mmm. Mmm. It's got a really long, long palate though. It's really keeping on, keeping on. Yeah, I'm sticking to my toasted marshmallow. Prefer some nuts. It's what I'm tasting. Yeah, I get it. There's mm-hmm. definitely a really nice sort of burnt orange peel sort of flavour in there as well. Mm, yeah. The water actually really extends the sweetness on the front palate mm. and the spiciness on the mm. back palate. Yeah, I agree. I agree. What is everyone at home thinking? And there's a bit of bit of pepper too in the, in the back. I'm not I'm not getting the same kind of spiciness as I got with the Macallan. No. 
So Mikhail and I got lots of different sort of cooking sort of spices that I sort of recognised, but this is not quite like that. I think there's a... What Ross is identifying as pepper at the back is actually that sharp, smoky, green... Yeah, you might be right. I'm, I'm wary of saying yours. things like pepper, just because mm. um, particularly in things like whiskey, that might be a bit of yeah. ethanol affecting the spiciness. Yeah. What about bay leaf? Bay leaf's a good bet. Yeah, that's not, yeah, that's not a bad call, actually. Which has got that sort of smoky and green. Yeah. yeah. Jim's Even, saying loving the muskiness. And Ashley said, like, mush, mush? <laughs> musk sticks. Yeah, that's the, Like those, yeah. See, I don't see... I get musky, mm. not musk sticks. Yeah, okay. I'm getting, like, um, cardboard... Yep. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. old book smell. Yeah, okay. Mm. Which there's apparently a specific name for, which I would really like to know. So if anybody knows... That's what my front hall smells like. Mm. Old books. <laughs> Well, yeah, Carmen's saying it reminds me of a burning grass in Ramona. Yeah, okay. a lot of burning grass, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and if anyone's wondering why that might be, um, what happens is they take the grain and it, um, once it's harvested, it will start to um, germinate. So it starts to sprout, basically. And you need a certain amount of that to have um, fermentation. That's what the malting is all about. Okay. Gives you the yeast and the flavour and all of that. And that's what makes the malt the flavour. Yeah. And how you get alcohol out of it. It's got to be a little bit alive. Yeah. Um, you've got to get all of those yep. fresh germination. But you've got to then stop it at some point to stop it from growing. So what they do is they dry it out. Um, and this is where you get peat smoke from. They use what's called peat, which is a, like a bog material. Yep. And they use that to smoke it. Um, some of the other whiskies where you get that heather and grassiness because they use hay or grass. Right. So a lot of the times you'll get different flavours in the whiskey, not necessarily just from the grain itself, that, right. but actually also but from this is not, this is what not... has been used to smoke dry it. Okay, but as, as whiskies go, this is not very peated. No. There no. are ones that are really peaty, aren't they? I yeah. think it's, yeah, Gareth described it as an introduction to peat. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Bill Lark actually owns <laughs> a peat bog. Gateway peat. Yeah. <laughs> There's a gateway in everything, isn't there? Yeah. We're very keen on our gateway drugs here. Um, um, Bill Lark actually owned the peat bog in the top of Tasmania. There's only yeah. three, so, two, I think two, maybe three in Australia. Yeah, and he owns one. Because he found it when he was um, trout fishing, didn't he? Yeah. And um, that no. was, you know. We'll That's have enough a, about Australian whiskey. I'm right, sure we'll okay. get there. We'll have a comment. Well, <laughs> park, the, when we have an Australian whiskey <laughs> tasting, you can remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Vivian is very fond of Australian whiskey. No, I would just, it's the only whiskey. Well, I've been there. I oh, haven't see. been to Scotland yes. as per previous conversation. As we should have been right now in, yeah. Scotland. Scotland, Indeed. straight up. Indeed. Mm. I reckon right now, is it, it's Thursday, we would have been at Kilcomer. Kilhoman. Oh. Kilhoman. Kilhoman. Yeah, right, uh, today. Never anyway. mind. Anyway, yeah. we're, we're, not, we're in Highland Park. Well, do we have a, well, yeah, where would we want to be drinking this one? Same. Same, I'm still, about, I'm still about the fire. In Scotland. <laughs> no. In a hut. <laughs> I will do. Australia will do. I reckon I'd go with some Toffield Butterscotch with this one. Cause it's nice I think... This is a dark chocolate thing, I think, for me. This I would do in a cocktail. Yeah, quite I wouldn't happily. Do, I wouldn't do this in a cocktail. In a cocktail. Yep. I, would, I, wouldn't I would do, do this in autumn and or afternoon-ish sort of thing. For McKellen, this yep. has got to be the last of the night. Yeah. In, in terms of these, cap. in yeah. terms of these sorts yeah. of flavors, yes. You know, I don't want to be drinking anything else or eating anything else after that's hit my palate. Yeah, okay, interesting. And thus, it is very dangerous. <laughs> you have to keep drinking it because <laughs> it means the it only thing I'm going to have after that is more of that. Might mean you go to bed. <laughs> um, experience shows that that's not what I'm good at. <laughs> not that past experience. Do we have a favorite out of these ones? Oh, I don't know. I, I think actually, I think. I think I like I like this one, mm -hmm. but I think the Macallan was I really like the Macallan. I think Macallan's my favourite as well. I, I think that's really interesting because if before this tasting I would have said the Highland Park, but today I'm with Macallan as well. Really I just good. think the Macallan had a more going on rounded. I really that sherry. This has a flavor. really long experience in terms of flavour. This has a really mouth coating. Yeah. 
like fixating round. I wouldn't pay a million rich. dollars for it. Okay, just saying. That being said, <laughs> what we're testing right now is not a million dollar whiskey. No, no. Beautiful. Very nice. Okay, good Beautiful. work. Love so it. Everyone's a fan favorite. Beautiful. Okay. Oh no, I didn't get the bottles for the next week. Ah! All right, so Slightly unorganized. And now for something completely different, we forget. <laughs> next week, and this yeah, is fun. This is easy because we can do this from here. Is that one next more? week we are doing wow. Shiraz gin. Excuse my back, everybody. Next week, Shiraz gin. Beautiful. We're doing four pillars, bossies, and two accents. Two accents. Um. We have a link now, so you can buy it online. It's super duper easy. Or if you do want to come and pick it up store and pay for it in store, you can always just give us a call and let Nick, you us know that you're coming. We can make sure one is ready for you. Yeah, but yeah, but now you just go straight into the event and you can just select the tastings and get it sent to you. Click on the link. So that's very exciting. And we had Scott from Two Accents is going to give you a bit of a hint on Monday as to what's going on. But if you want to get it for next week, if you haven't got it already, yeah. Get in straight away. Yeah, um, today or tomorrow. And I think this is... I'm very excited for this. Um, I'm so excited. I will let you guys know these are completely different methods of production. Um, and yes. it's almost accidentally timed up very perfectly with the release of the next vintage of Four Pillars. Yeah, fantastic. And then the week after we'll be doing Fortifies. And I shall post that event tomorrow. So you'll know what we'll be doing. Beautiful. Beautiful. Awesome. So if you want Fortifies, hop online. And if you want any of the Shiraz gin, do that. Let us know. Let us know. And uh, stay well, stay well share. If anybody is in the lockdown area, see, I'm still here now and murdered. Me. It's okay. <laughs> tempting, tempting. Yes. Um, if you if you are in a lockdown zone or you know anybody in a lockdown zone, really look after yourselves. And if you need, and we've got some people who will deliver to lockdown zones. So if you need things delivered, you need a care package, let us know and we will get it out there. Or if you want to have a care package delivered to somebody who's in a lockdown area, just to cheer them up, which would be a nice thing to do then let us know. Um, and we have loved seeing everyone's photos on Instagram yeah. and Facebook of their little tasting packs. Keep it up, guys. We Absolutely. are still giving out free tasting packs every now and again. Yep. Um, so, so keep it up. Recommend Do we have a share. winner this week? We haven't decided one this week. We'll we might, decide now. We we'll might have to sit down. Know. We'll let the winner know. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Awesome. Beautiful. Thanks, guys. See you guys next week. See you next week. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Cheers.